This video is aimed at professional service technicians and users proficient with mechanical and electrical repairs. Thoroughly test after any repair work. Hi, in this video, we will demonstrate how to replace the compressor of AirBuddy. For example, if your AirBuddy was involved in an accident and the compressor suffered water damage. At minimum, you'll need the tools contained in our tool set, which includes a foldable T-handle, Torx 15 and Torx 30 bits, and a 16 millimeter deep socket. In this video, we will also use a power tool to move a bit faster and a torque wrench to tighten the compressor screws into the pressure relief valve to the specification. Let's start by removing the platform. Use the Torx 15 screwdriver to remove all four screws that hold the platform. One of them is hidden under the warranty label. Once you remove all screws, you can lift the platform by hand to expose the compressor and the wire connectors. What you'll need to do now is to take the seam ripper or small cuticle scissors to cut the heat shrink tubings that cover the wire connectors. Like so. Now you can disconnect all connectors and remove the platform. Put it aside and let's move on to the compressor. Loosen the two large screws that hold the compressor. Use the T-handle with Torx 30 bit and remove both screws by turning them counterclockwise. Next, slightly rotate the heatsink to make sure that it doesn't stick to the compressor. You can use a large coin or a similar object. Grab the compressor and gently pull it out. If the compressor cylinder remained inside the housing, use your fingers to pull it out too. Now you should inspect and clean or replace the valve plate. The easiest way to remove it is by pushing in the internal valve of the air coupler and blowing compressed air in the main air coupler by an air gun. The valve will pop out. If you don't use compressed air, you can pry the valve plate out with a suitable hook tool. Remove both valve plate O-rings since you will be replacing them with new ones. Then remove the pressure relief valve that sits at the bottom of the housing. Attach a 16 millimeter deep socket to the T-handle or use a ratchet with an extension and unscrew the valve by turning it counterclockwise. Make sure that you also remove the pressure relief valve O-ring, which may sometimes stick inside the housing. If the pressure valve can be cleaned with descaler, like shown in our other video, reuse it. Otherwise, replace it with a new one. Also, inspect the compressor head tube for any salt crystals, debris, or oxidation, and if required, clean it properly before you start the reassembly. When mounting the valve, Put the valve O-ring back and lightly lubricate with silicone grease. Use the 16 millimeter socket to screw it back. It helps if you hold the housing upside down at the start to make sure that the O-ring doesn't get out of place. Screw the valve all the way in and fasten. Ideally, you should use a torque wrench that you set to 12 Newton meters. Don't over tighten it.
Now take two new valve plate O-rings and install the first one inside of the compressor head. Insert the valve cap with the valve strip facing inwards. It's easier if you do this upside down. Install the second O-ring on top of the valve cap and press it in the groove with your fingernail. At this point, you should restore the layer of heat paste on the heat sink. If the old paste is still okay, just add a little bit of fresh paste on top and spread it evenly. Or better yet, clean the old paste entirely with wet wipes and apply a new, fresh layer. Put on a disposable glove and spread a thin, uniform layer that is about 0.2 to 0.4 millimeters thick. Make sure to cover the entire area of the heat sink. Like so. Now you are ready to install the new compressor. If the cylinder detached, insert it back onto the piston. Start at a slight angle and slowly rotate the cylinder to prevent any damage to the piston seal. Hold the compressor straight and gently insert inside. Make sure that it goes all the way down and sits flush with the housing. When you put the compressor screws back, clean them first and replace the O-rings with new ones. Lubricate them with silicone O-ring grease. Then apply a little bit of Loctite 243 thread locker at the end of the threads to make sure that they can't loosen by the compressor vibrations. Don't forget to clean the O-ring seats with a cotton swab and check that there is no debris left in there. Insert the screws and fasten. Ideally, you should use a torque wrench that you set to 9 Newton meters. Now you are ready to install the platform with electronics. Take the new heat shrink tubings and put them on the wires. The two thinner ones go on the black and red power wires and the wider one over the red plastic connector to the siren. Then insert the new platform. Connect all connectors and position the heat shrink tubings to cover the connectors, roughly in the middle.
Take one sheet of copy paper and fold it twice so that you get four layers. Place it along the plastic wall of the housing for heat protection when you operate the hot air gun. Turn the heat gun on and set it to about 250 degrees Celsius or about 480 degrees Fahrenheit and blow the hot air onto the heat shrink tubings. Like so. Once they shrink from one side, you can lift the platform to get better access and work around the wires from all sides. Make sure that the heat shrink wrap tightly around the wires without any gaps or wrinkles that could allow any moisture to penetrate inside. When closing the platform, make sure that you route the wires along the compressor and under the tooth on the compressor breather. Gently push on the black wire sideways to make sure that it doesn't get pinched between the platform and the screw boss on the housing. Now, close the platform and press firmly by hand to ensure that each corner of the platform sits on top of the screw boss. Hence, none of the wires has been pinched. Fasten the screws by a hand screwdriver, or if you use an electric tool, set it to the lowest torque setting and then moderately tighten by hand to prevent stripping the thread. 